This video is about creating markers in your charts or graphs. I won't explain how you create charts or graphs. I assume you know that. If you don't, I will give you at the end information where to find good help. But once you have your charts or your graphs, you want to mark certain items in your chart. Let me give you a simple example. Say we have three items measured during three weeks, and these were the three columns we got, but we have for each week an average value there. How do you get that average in there? It's of course a calculation. So we calculated the mean at the bottom of those three weeks, and we are going to add them to this chart that is in a beginning stage. I'm just going to expand the range by one more row, and it makes that mean a new column. But you want that column to be like this line here. So the first step we have to do is we have to format that data series and put it on a secondary axis. And then we have to widen that column so it covers the whole range by changing the gap width, let's say, to zero. Then we make that color transparent. So we do a solid fill, and we make it transparent so you can see everything behind it. Then we have one issue left, is that the secondary axis ends at point 6 and the primary one at point 8, so we have to reset the max to point 8 instead of point 6. And there is that line. I, I don't have a, a marker or a border, so we are going to put a solid line around it so you, you can see better where the averages were. Sometimes you have a lot of data, like on this sheet. We have the 50 states of the United States, and that is their population in the year 2000. And we want to see only those states that have a population size above the average of all the states. The simplest way of doing that is to create a filter in the headers or the labels. That filter can be done easily through data and turn the filter on. So you get here a drop down box and you say I want a number filter everything above average. Whatever you do to your table will be reflected in your chart. So it will now show all the states above average. But at the moment you change that filter again, and I clear the filter, it gives you all the states again. Sometimes you don't want to use a filter in your table. You just want a marker in your chart that says this is the average for all the states. How did we get that line in there? Basically very simple. The secret is an extra column in C that calculates the average for all the states. So the formula in here is the average of B2, control shift arrow down for B51. Make sure that you lock that reference so it doesn't change when you copy it downwards into B3 for B51. You do that by hitting the F4 key OK it and copy that formula down. That column has been added to the data source of this table. And that's how that line was created. In this situation, we did it differently. We didn't put a line here for the average. We marked all the values that were above average. The secret is again an extra column. And in the extra column, we made a formula that says if the cell to our left, in this case B2, is greater than the average of B2 through B51 locked or absolute, then give me that value B2. Otherwise, and that is an important step, use the formula NA open close parentheses. That means not available, not available. What is so good about that function that whatever is not available will not be shown 
anywhere. So it will not show Alabama as a marker, Alaska, Arizona. We add that series to the data source and that last series of values is just markers and no lines. Otherwise you would get a line from California to Florida. Another way of doing that is in F4 we created a manual filter. Let's say everything over 5 something, 10, 150, etc. How did we get that one? That is a data, data validation issue. Data validation. Allow a list. And in the list is all these values. 5 million, 10 million, 150 million, or whatever you want to add. And when we use that filter and say I want only the ones over 10,000, then you get only markers over 10,000. So in the formula below it, we use that value in C1. If B2 relative is greater than C1 absolute, then give me B2, otherwise NA again. It's the same idea. Then in the following situation, we only show the markers for states above whatever is in C1 in your filter. So in other words, in the data source behind it, we left column B out. So it only shows column C. So if you ever change your filter here, everything over 10 million, it will only show those records. Another situation is the following. In days we have columns of temperatures at certain days and we want another series of values above the average again. If the temperature of that day is greater than the average of all the temperatures and give me B2 otherwise NA. Okay. It. Add that series of values to your chart by expanding the range. And in this case you will see that you got for certain days a new column. The only thing is you want that column to be on top of the other one. So we are going to talk to the format option of that column and we are going to say we want a an overlap of 100%. The gap width is up to you, but I think we should keep it that, this way. The only issue I have to warn you for, that sometimes depending on how you started your columns, that red column may be behind the blue column. How, how come? When you click on the the maroon columns, you will see that the formula on top says equals series, the label, comma, and then the next argument is all the categories, comma, the values for those categories, and then it says two, that says it's in the order of two. If you change that into one, then everything is hidden behind those bluish columns. So we have to set that back to two to make sure that they are really in front of everything. So if anything changes on a certain day, let's say on day two the temperature was actually 70 degrees, then that column will automatically adjust. One more word of caution. If you work with XY charts, XY charts are very different. In this case, I had to use an XY chart because there are certain days missing. I only measured on certain days. If this were a regular column chart, you would have the category 1 and then the category 4, but there are days missing in between and they can vary. So if the intervals are not equal between all these days, then you have to use an XY chart. But an XY chart does not have categories on the horizontal axis. So I need to put a marker here that puts two coordinates here from 
1 on the x-axis to 71.9 on the y-axis up to day 28, the last day, and the average again. So here are averages, the average of V2 through B11. And it will put that line nicely there. If you make this day 0, the beginning of your axis actually, then that marker will go to the beginning of the x-axis. And if I make that day 30, because your axis ends there, then the machine automatically adjusts to 35. So you either set the max of your axis to 30, or you don't do what I did. So now that line will go from the left marker on the x-axis to the right marker on the x-axis. So with x, y charge you need two sets of coordinates to put those averages there. You probably want to know much more about charts and how to make them sometimes. I created a lot of tools for you. If you are a general Excel user, I made an Excel 2007 expert CD-ROM. It also works for 2010 and 2013. If you are a more scientific user, I made a CD-ROM for 2007 and for 2013. If you prefer books, if you like them better, then I wrote two books on this issue. You can find them at MrExcel.com, Amazon.com, GenesisPC.com. On Amazon.com you just type my name, Gerard Verschuren, and you will find all the tools I developed for you.